So it is still May 11, 2019. I'm afraid that we are just seeing the beginning of the flooding that is going to be occurring for several months. Sorry to say this, Louisiana, New Orleans, but levee pressure. Yes, the Mississippi River flooding with New Orleans levee pressure increasing. Spillway is opened. The Bonnet Carry, I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it. It's opened. Louisiana governor declare a statewide emergency. Well, it looks like you're going to get some pretty bad flooding coming your way. Uh, this is Craig Missouri. This is Craig, Missouri. Look at it. Flooded out. Okay. Um, here's Oklahoma. Well, this rain in the forecast, many are concerned about drainage in Youngsville, especially maintenance of the Anselm Cooley. Today, Mayor Ken Rutter posted on his Facebook page that residents who called LCG about cleaning out that Cooley were told it's the city of Youngsville's responsibility. This despite an agreement between Youngsville and LCG signed last fall that stated LCG would take care of the Cooley. Our Justice Henderson talks to residents who want action. Her story, all new tonight at 10. E.J. and Lucille Broussard are 80 and 81 years old. The couple has been living in Youngsville for the last 11 years. They say they've been dealing with flooding from the Cooley behind their home since they moved in. Right now, the uh, grass and the trash that gets in so retains the water. And it doesn't take much at all for like the rain this morning, which are not necessarily a heavy rain. Uh, it was up to the bank. It was ready to crash over. Their home flooded in 2016. They say 14 and a half inches of water got into their home, and they believe the Cooley is to blame. This is uncalled for. This could be, uh, my belief, it could be corrected. Not could, it has to be corrected. Broussard contacted Lafayette Consolidated Government on Friday. LCG said the issue belonged to the city of Youngsville. That contradicts what the mayor president, Joel Robito, said in October, when he agreed with Youngsville Mayor Ken Ritter that LCG was responsible for the upkeep of coolies. I mean, the reality is that he called into question some language that uh, he felt put more burden on the city of Youngsville than the current law places on the city of Youngsville. And so uh, when I looked at it, I tended to agree with him, and he was gracious not to say, I told you so. As you can see, the water's already high from a heavy rain this morning. The couple says if it rains again, that water could come all the way up to their fence. And they're afraid that that water might go into their house and there could be another flooding incident if someone doesn't come to clean the coolie. Somebody has to do something about it. And none of this uh, passing, passing, the, the, passing the ball back and forth, you know. It's you, it's you. No, it's yours. Take it. The ball's in your court. We reached out to LCG for comment. A spokesperson said she was trying to find someone to speak on the issue and we have not heard back. Okay. Americans get it. You are not going to be helped anymore. You will not get the services that you used to get. That's just the way it is now. You are being destroyed deliberately. I sure wish that people would begin to do a little bit of research to find out what is really happening here in our country. Uh, and you're going to pay through the nose for your own destruction. In an emergency, the public would be asked to please come out and help. More breaking news tonight. The Tulsa District Corps of Engineers has declared an emergency because of potential flooding. The Oklahoma Department of Emergency Management telling us that Keystone Lake and Call Lake are the areas of greatest concern. Call Lake is nearly 34 feet above normal and its flood pool is at 97% capacity. Keystone Lake, 19 feet above normal and its flood pool is more than half full. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers already providing sandbags to two areas since last week, deploying a pump team to Wagoner and a sandbag machine to Sand Springs. Emergency management officials are asking for volunteers to fill bags through the weekend, those sandbags through the weekend, because on Monday, the Corps is planning the largest water release in 26 years from Keystone Dam. Because more water is coming out of the spillway at the dam, um, we're getting ready uh, in case there is an emergency. 
Releasing water Monday is going to raise the Arkansas River when its level is already high. And to make matters worse, more rain is expected this weekend that could push lakes beyond their flood stages. And that yet another storm means even more water pouring into the area dams. And Mike has been checking the radar for us. So what do you think? All right. So if you are in Oklahoma, you can click on the link and listen to your forecast. Canada, Ottawa, the water, waters are not receding. They just don't recede anymore. Isn't that a little odd? In 2017, we did get quite a bit of water, but it was nothing like what we're experiencing now. Unlike Ottawa, uh, the water hasn't receded here. It did a bit, um, but it's come back up and people are saying that it's up higher than it was before. So we have some friends that are staying in hotels. We have other friends that are staying with family. Um, but we know of about at least a dozen families that have been put out this, from this flooding. And are they going to be able to move back into their homes or are their homes totally underwater? They're what? totally underwater. Yeah, our friends was showing pictures today and it's right up to her staircase. We have other people that it's over their electrical outlets in their homes. So it's, it's, it's heartbreaking. This is a small township with not a lot of, uh, not a big tax base. I understand their resources are limited, but my God, if it's the hydroelectric dams doing this to us, come on. Is it worth that much money to generate that power to wipe out all these people all the time? 217 was bad, and then this is just the worst. You're in the deep water, like 15 feet deep, I would say now. And in the summertime, you can walk out 500 feet before you'll, you'll hit water. That's all white sand that goes out up to 1,000 feet, depending on how dry the summer is. Like you want to go out there for a swim. It's a walk. This is normally a road. No, this is my yard. And the water is eight feet deep. If you jumped off there in the summer, you'd break your legs and jumped off that deck. A week and a half ago, mm -hmm. the military came in and helped us. So it's been uh, ongoing, the pumps. Uh, we have four pumps going. It's been, they've been going since then. They're still going now that the water is coming up. Um, and, and it went up two inches overnight. So it, 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 the groundwater is seeping underneath the crawl space. It's so saturated. Uh, our septic system is pooched, I'm sure. We can't use it. I don't know how many people have been taken out of their homes. Um, a lot of them are cottages and some people they're not even aware of it because they're in Florida or something. They're all underwater. They're all underwater? Yeah, because the water is right up to the road, the entrance of the Lacqua Bay. Can't even get in there. Can't even get in there unless you have... <laughs> unless you can swim well. <laughs> or a canoe or a boat. <laughs> People are all over you know, in this country, in Canada, They've been dealing with this for weeks or months. Flash flood warnings issued for much of South Mississippi. Do you know what took place in Mississippi? Okay, well, we have this. Heavy rains overnight caused flash flooding that derailed this freight train in Mississippi. At least 20 cars left the track. No injuries have been reported. Emergency officials are reporting multiple high water rescues in the area and some roads there are underwater. Well, you want to see the roads? Now, I can't play this. This is live storms media uh, video, but look at, look at this street, okay? This was from the rain this is, really, this is from the rain? Or is it from the frequencies that loosen up the ground underneath these roads? The extremely low frequencies that I have shown on many of my videos, the radar and satellite videos, the frequencies they can emit into the atmosphere or extremely low frequencies 
certainly coming from Gwen Towers, that are littering all over the country. They are, it's amazing how many Gwen Towers there are. They emit ground based, Gwen, ground wave emergency network, ground wave frequencies loosening up the ground. Do you know how many roads in just the past two years, how many roads have been literally destroyed from uh, Michigan all the way down to Texas and Mississippi? Well, this is Mississippi. Mississippi in the last 24 hours. Oh, did you see that gas link leak from that? <laughs> Wow. Well, we also have more fabulous pictures for you of the flooding in Mississippi. Now, we're talking a tremendous amount of damage. Look at this road. Okay, um, sorry, my computer is really bad to protect his home. It's very funky today. Yeah, this is where all that water from Jim Hill would have emptied into on Thursday on its way to the Pearl River. Take a look at what we found inside the creek today. Large obstructions, tree branches, as well as a shopping cart. Drainage problems like this is what caused flooding on yesterday. We spoke with one man whose home was hit twice in two weeks. He says he didn't mind filling up sandbags to try to keep his home safe. Philip Mason is rushing to fill sandbags to protect his home before more rain falls this weekend. So I'm not taking no, you know, no chances. So uh, just trying to get what I can up to the house, put them outside my house, on my fence line in the back of my house, and trying to see. To keep the water from coming in. Mason showed us cell phone video Thursday splash flooding outside his home in the Northwest Terror subdivision. I got over 40 gallons of water out of my house yesterday. 40 gallons. Mason said the heavy downpour left four inches of water inside. What's it like in your house? Uh, the cops all wet. Uh, I had TVs, projectors, all got messed up. So by now I'm in the process of soaking all the water out and trying to you know, get the water the carpet clean and uh, and dry out. Now Mason said he complained to the city after that last flood and he thought the problem had been fixed. By the way, the city says they have enough sandbags to fill 10,000. So if you need some, you might want to run by the city's service center to try to pick them up on Michael Avalon Street. And once again, the city didn't fix the problem if this is what is actually causing the flooding. In two weeks, he got hit twice. We're hearing it over and over again. Flooded out four times in four years. Flooded out twice in two weeks. This is unprecedented and people really need to start asking questions about what is taking place here. Backed up drains are causing major flooding for folks living on Melwood Drive. Now neighbors say they put a request to the city multiple times and the city has come out, but the drains haven't been cleared. I was impossible flooding with my home. It rock washes back into my backyard, it's turning down my gate, uh, my fence in my backyard, it's flooding my neighbor's backyard. It's just becoming a real house and a real head headache. Neighbors say the drains sit across from one another on Melwood Drive. I mean <laughs> well, you ask the city to just clear out the drains and they just don't do it. Same yeah. video. Sorry. Well, um, this was a tornado in Virginia. And look at and it. Nice going away. Look at that. Wow. Sorry, my heart. Are we okay, Dad? It's not very big. Look at that. Um, it's building. Okay, okay. Um, this is yeah. not. <laughs> That's not a regular tornado. Oh, wait, I'm like, you can see the debris flying on it though. 
And do you see, uh, sorry, but check out how straight lined is it right here in this cloud, the V that uh, suddenly appears. But this is clearly not a natural tornado because you can see how squared off it is right here at the uh, the tail end. Look at that. Wow. Sorry, my heart. Are we okay, Dad? It's not very big. Look at that. Um, y'all. It's building up. Some Daddy, daddy. I don't like that. Let's. There you go. Oh, and it disappears. Oh, you just broke up. Okay. I'm gonna wait. I'm like. You can see the debris like flying on it. Oh, God. You all the debris in the air. Yeah. It did form there for a second. Ooh. It's like still there. Yeah, it's still there. Yeah, but it's moving it's like the layer. Oh, I don't care about you filming it. Boom. Wow. It's fine, guys. It's just great. No, it's coming this way. It's coming straight. Uh, that, that, I'm sorry. Tornadoes are just not looking like tornadoes anymore. Um, and you had some damage from a tornado in Suffolk. This, I believe, is the... Um, Virginia storm damage. All right, everybody. You thought I was kidding about the tornadoes? I wasn't. Take a look. Tornado hit right here. I'm sorry, right. these are uh, these are either um, microbursts. Our trucks are Come on. Not happy with me. They're either microbursts or um, just these sudden winds that yes they can create with frequencies, frequencies. Well, they can be used for good or they can be used as a very powerful weapon. Tornado damage is not looking like uh, tornado damage anymore. What, this tornado? Well, did it just bounce down, take out those trees, bounce right back up? Storm damage in Arkansas, apartments leave damage in south, tornado damage to two apartment complexes in Arkansas, part of a powerful line of thunderstorms, Severe weather moved eastward after forcing people from their homes in Kansas, soaking Houston once again, straining levees along the surging Mississippi River. That was on Wednesday. This was posted yesterday at 5 a.m. Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Flooding has caused billions of dollars of damage to farmland, homes, and businesses across the Midwest. I searching for storms, flooding, tornadoes, hail, and the damage that it has occurred is getting very hard to find. You find articles where they're talking about the billions of dollars of damage to farmland, homes, businesses, but you don't really see it. And mainstream media is giving you the same videos, the same pictures of flooding, that took place like days ago, but they're reporting on more flooding that took place. Yes, it's very hard to get a very uh, big picture of what's been happening on a daily basis, but five inches fell in parts of Mississippi. Trees were down in North Alabama, Arkansas. 150 people were displaced from their apartment buildings. Uh, Kansas, flooding waterways forced evacuations and school closures. A 19-year-old had to be rescued off her car roof. Northwestern Missouri's Halt County. Some people have been able to get back into their homes 
after the after the levees breached but many have not been able to and emergency management director Tom Bullock the water won't go away he can't get back into his home wind driven water caused more flooding in southeastern Michigan wind driven water wow now we have wind-driven water flooding. Okay. All right. That's all I have for you. If any of you have more information, regardless of what state, could you please link to it below in the comment section? Many people, and the numbers just continue to increase. Many people are really struggling, suffering, how many are able to recover, especially those who have been hit with repeated flooding? You know what? I'm going to include a little bit more. Uh, hang on. I was going to do another video, but I, I can't. So here, the rain and flooding is affecting every farmer in the Midwest, and this it's six minutes long. Listen to what is taking place with farmers. I will link below to Wax Me Five. Um, a very good report. Hi everyone, this is Lakshmi Five. The flooding is still continuing in the Midwest, destroying a lot of farmland. And now there's a mountain of sand that is spread across Nebraska farms after the floods. Nebraska landowners are seeking new solutions for a millions year old phenomenon. Tons of sand, sediment, and silt, some in dunes as high as 10 feet, have been scattered across the eastern half to two-thirds of the state by the marsh flooding. In some areas, washed out corn stalks are three to four feet deep. Tree limbs are in piles, and topsoil has been washed away. And one of the farmers says, we have a mountain of sand piled up. Sediment from Nebraska's rivers and streams has been deposited on nearby flooded land for millions of years. Now, the U.S. Department of Agriculture officials, University of Nebraska Lincoln Extension specialists, and extension educators are trying to figure out what to do with it. So, they're racing against the clock because farmers need to plant and ranchers need grass pastures to graze their, get their cattle. 16% of the corn crop is planted, which is slightly ahead of last year, but behind the 23% five-year average. Some ranchers may have to use the land that they can supplement their herds with hay to make up for the loss in production and deal with sand issues later in the summer. Eight inches or less of the sand sediment mix can usually be tilled into the soil with the right equipment, but for others with much larger mass, it may require removing sand and stockpiling it along the edge or in the corner of fields. In extreme cases, it might be too costly to do anything but leave it. So that is a really bad situation about the sand. And she also talks about how now, once the water does recede, they can't use their tractors and their farm equipment until the soil dries. So they're looking at even more time. But I want you to hear um, just a little bit more of what Laxme 5 has to say. We've had eight inches in the last couple of weeks alone that every farmer has been affected, says Weber. And it's been weeks since the fields that are at least six miles away from the river have been dry. The ground is sticky and muddy, which means it can't withstand the heavy machinery and it's not dry enough to germinate seeds. Weber says it will take weeks more to dry out that only if there isn't a and, and that's only if there isn't any additional rain. We've had to be very patient and just wait for conditions to improve. 
If things are delayed very much longer, we may plant shorter season variety of corn and soybeans just so that our harvest is not affected and delayed. And a shorter season could impact yield, but there's still hope. The delayed planting might affect the yield. It's too early to tell a lot if it will depend. It will depend on how the rest of the year goes. If we have good weather the remainder of the year, things could still yield well, but it will be a wait and see the situation, says Weber. Justin says that um, what the farmers need is warmer temperatures and about a week of dry weather for the farms to dry out before they can bring the equipment on them. So that is the situation that we're in. And of course, all this is due to some very crazy weather patterns, a lot of weather manipulation, geoengineering, things of this nature, because this is not even, you know, natural for it to be flooding so much at this time that they, they haven't really experienced this kind of devastation before in these areas. So it's very odd, very strange, and it's all a manipulation because we know that every day they're pumping out these chemtrails into the air nonstop every single day, and they're manipulating storms, they're making places rain where it shouldn't rain, and they're making things drier where it shouldn't be so dried out, and they create these monster storms, these super storms. So it's, it's all a manipulation. And the agenda really is to, is to hurt the economy, hurt the American people, make us suffer even more, get us more into poverty, make, our, make, make there be a food shortage. It's all going to be an economic collapse. And it's not very good, but this is really what's going on. So I just wanted to give you an update on from a perspective of a farmer. That's what I was trying to do here in this video, give you a perspective of someone who's actually living there and with a farm and dealing in this situation. All right. And someone who is awake. <clears throat> so you guys in Nebraska, you really need to listen to Laxmi 5 because she knows what is taking place. This is not climate change. It's not snowmelt. You're being destroyed. So I really appreciated hearing uh, what Laxmi 5 had to say at the tail end. All right, I want to thank um, his word for sending along this video to me, some flooding in Salina, Kansas. And he goes through Kansas. I've driven through Salina several times. It is just farmland, farmland. I always hated going through Kansas because it takes forever and it's flat and there is, you know, nothing really there but farms and farms and farms. It was very hard for me to drive through Kansas. But looking at what he captured here, I mean, this, this farmland is truly, um, it's just flooded out. y'all know that uh, I'm out here in Salina, Kansas, and the waters seem to be receding a little bit out here, um, but many of these rivers and banks, that's a whole bunch of farmland right there, just flooded. But many of these uh, uh, rivers and creeks are really high. Um, a few days ago, they were almost up to uh, the interstate, but it's still flooded pretty badly out here. Um, it's 
line of Kansas. I'm a truck driver, and I meet a uh, I meet a, a driver out uh, from Denver, out in Waukegan, Kansas. I drive out of Kansas City. Uh, we've been pretty lucky there around Kansas City. Uh, not so much up north of us, as you well know. You've been covering a lot. And uh, for my subscribers, I am going to leave her most previous video link. Okay, I really appreciate um, having, you know, people post videos on what they are seeing so that we have you know, a, a clear picture of what's taking place. So, you guys with, you know, YouTube channels, post your videos. Take videos of what is happening in your area. It's very important. Kansas got more rain since this video. Nebraska. Cows stuck in mud. Don't worry, the cow was saved and not hurt. Record flooding areas. Yeah, it's a heartbreaking video. Look at these roads. What's happening that our roads can't sustain rain now? They're just crumbling. Farmers were hit hard. There is so much devastation, I can't believe it. Come on, guys, get up. All these dogs were rescued. Grab it, grab it, grab it. How do you get them down? Pull her, just pull her. Watch the horns, just pull her. There you go. Me and Hand, we're out. All right, come on. And goats and pigs and hogs. Hey, come on. You know, farmers were already hurting. <laughs> how, how are they going to recover now? Trump's tariffs hurt them. We know that so many are going bankrupt. And farmers are killing themselves. This is deliberate destruction here. Deliberate. It's not an act of God, not Mother Nature. These are the psychopathic, uh, 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 subhuman, corporatist, globalist, elitist, whatever you want to call them. They're destroying just ordinary citizens in every country. But this is what's happening here. It's bad. It's bad. It's bad. And I hope to God that Americans can come together and help one another. Because alone, you can't survive this. You can't survive it. All things are